What's so strange about a little girl running around in a bunny costume carrying a basket of chocolate eggs? Well, at Easter time, it's not strange. Uh, these are the symbols and the customs that we grew up with. When we were born, these customs were already here. As I keep insisting, you and I were born in a ready-made world. We didn't come up with a lot of these customs that come up every single year on our calendar. You and I didn't come up with Easter and Christmas and Halloween and St. Patrick's Day and all these other festivals that show up on our calendar every single year. So what's so strange about a little girl running around in a bunny costume carrying a basket of eggs and of course passing them out at Easter time? Not, not strange at all whatsoever in our modern space age western world. But wait a minute. Rabbits don't lay eggs. So where did this custom come from? What do rabbits have to do with eggs? Now, of course, this weekend coming up is Easter. And of course, many people celebrate Easter. And you see a lot of people in the stores buying chocolate bunnies and chocolate eggs because it's Easter time. And it's not strange at all in our Western world of handing out eggs, chocolate eggs, and rabbits too little children. But have you ever looked it up? Have you ever wondered where this custom came from? And what does it have to do with Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Well, before I get on with this subject, I want to offer you this free booklet. Is Easter Christian? What a question. People would say, well, of course Easter's Christian. Is it really? Well, I urge you to download this booklet. Is Easter Christian? Free of charge off our website, BritishIsrael.ca, and of course we will put the link underneath the YouTube player, and you can download it directly from there. Free of charge is Easter Christian. Do a lot of these customs originate from the Bible, and if they don't, then where did it come from? Download that booklet off our website, BritishIsrael.ca. <laughs> The richest, most powerful group of nations on Earth, the United States and British Commonwealth, are part of one of the most mysterious puzzles of all time. The prophecies of the Bible mention such small nations as Libya, Syria, and Ethiopia, but they seem to omit all reference to our peoples. How could such important nations be left out of inspired prophecy? This mysterious puzzle is unraveled in the full-length book, The United States and British Commonwealth in Prophecy. This book reveals the true identity of our peoples from the pages of your Bible. And yet it goes beyond past history and shows you what to expect in the future. For your free copy of the United States and British Commonwealth in Prophecy, log on to our website at britishisrael.ca for your free download. What are the origins of the Easter Bunny? Can you find it in the scriptures? Well, no, you cannot find anywhere in the pages of the Bible the Easter Bunny. So if it didn't originate from the Bible, then where did it come from? Well, I want to read you this article from Christianity.com. It's titled, How is the Easter Bunny Connected to Christianity? It's meaning and origin, and this is from Madeline Kalu, and she says this, The rabbit, meaning the Easter Bunny, has pre-Christian roots. So the Easter Bunny was around long before Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It has pre-Christian roots associated with fertility, new life, and spring. Of course, these pagan religions always mix uh, sex with religion. Fertility, new life, and spring. However, now notice this. Early Christians weaved the pagan symbolism of the rabbit into their Christian traditions. So, as Will Durant says, Christianity did not get rid of paganism, it adopted paganism. They weave their pa the pagan symbolism of the rabbit into their Christian traditions. So they adopted paganism and they did this to win converts to the church. As it says here, they weave pa the pagan symbolism of the rabbit into their Christian traditions to make the teachings of Jesus Christ more amenable to those outside of the faith. They did it to persuade people to come into the Christian church, and so their lifestyles really didn't change. They continued to celebrate these festivals, but the church says you 
can continue to celebrate these festivals, but instead of doing it to the old pagan gods, you're now going to do it to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, does God allow that? Well, we'll get into that a little later on in the program. Now, this article goes on to say, the origin of the Easter Bunny can be dated back to the 13th century in Germany. The German folk, known as the Teutons, worship pagan gods and goddesses. One such goddess was Ostara, otherwise known as Ostara or Easter. She was revered as the goddess of fertility and spring. The word Easter finds its etymology from the goddess's name. This is where we get our word Easter from. And then she says, due to its prolific breeding tendencies, sex and religion always mixed in together, the rabbit became the symbol for Estara. Now, eventually, the Germans adopted this imagery and applied it to the Virgin Mary. And you see that in old medieval paintings and medieval customs. Now, notice what she says here in this article. In AD 595, 40 Roman monks were sent by Pope Gregory to England with the assignment of converting the Anglo-Saxons to Christianity. And then it says, under the Pope's instructions, the 40 missionaries convinced the pagan Britons to integrate their ancient celebrations with Christian festivities where both festivals where both festival calendars coincided. So they convinced the Britons to integrate their ancient celebrations with Christian festivities. Notice, it says the amalgamation of these two traditions is evident in the observation of the Easter celebration. Like their Germanic forefathers, the Teutons, the Anglo-Saxons worshipped the goddess Ostara and held feasts in her honor on the March equinox. Hence, the Roman monks were able to encourage the Britons to accept the celebration of Jesus Christ's resurrection at Easter, while at the same time continuing their worship of the goddess Ostara and revering her motif, the rabbit. Now, as she notes in this article, there are two celebrations, one by the Anglo-Saxons and one by the Roman Church, and they both fell on the same day, the day called Easter. Now, as I mentioned in the last broadcast that I did on the Passover, I show you that in the second century, there was a controversy that took place, the Quattro Decimus Controversy, where the Roman Church wanted to establish Easter and drop the festival called the Passover. And I show you in history that the, the Church became more and more Gentile, less and less Jewish. Till eventually the Gentile Christians wanted to break away from their Jewish historical roots and they wanted to establish their own identity, their own religion. So what did they do? They went into their Gentile roots, their Gentile background, and they took a festival that they used to celebrate to Venus and Aphrodite. And Venus, Aphrodite, Ostara, Aster, it's all the same goddess and it's all the same festival as we see in the two Babylons by Hislop. And so they went, took this festival that they used to celebrate to Venus and Aphrodite, and they changed it around, and they called it Christian. They Christianized it, and it was now the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So then when they went to the Anglo-Saxons, they saw the same festival, and this is how they convinced the Anglo-Saxons to come into the church they said, we have the same celebration, only we do it to Jesus Christ. And this is how they convinced the Anglo-Saxons to come into the church. And instead of celebrating Easter to the Anglo-Saxon goddess of spring, they were now doing it to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so, eventually, when Easter was established in medieval Europe, then the German immigrants who settled, as she says here, in Pennsylvania, Dutch country in the United States, brought all their traditions with them in the 1700s. And this is why today we see in our country today, in Canada, the United States, at Easter time, people dressing up like bunnies, handing out Easter eggs to little children because of the German immigrants that brought this tradition with them way back in the 1700s. Now, what about the Easter egg? Well, when I come back, I will show you the origins of the Easter egg. But don't forget to log on to our website, britishisrael.ca, and download these two booklets, Is Easter Christian? 
and Jesus' resurrection on the seventh day Sabbath, free of charge, off our website, BritishIsrael.ca. King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that troubled him, and Daniel the prophet came to explain what that dream meant. At first he saw a head of gold, and that was the Chaldean Empire, his empire. After that came the arms of silver, and that was the Persian Empire. After that empire came the torso of brass, and that was the Greco-Macedonian Empire. And after that empire came the two legs of iron, and that was the Roman Empire. After this came the part potter's clay and part iron, which is NATO and the EU in our modern day. And then the iron mixed with miry clay. That is the last resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire that will fight Christ at his coming. For more details, log on to our website at britishisrael.ca and download your free booklet, Who, What is the Beast of Revelation? Free of charge, off our website, britishisrael.ca. So what about the Easter egg? Where did that come from? Do you find anywhere in the Bible the Easter egg? Well, no, it didn't originate from the Bible at all. Of course, it originated in paganism. Notice this article by Penny Travers, The Origin of Easter from Pagan Festivals and Christianity to Bunnies and Chocolate Eggs. It says here that, uh, have you ever wondered where these bizarre traditions uh, came to be? It says, well, it turns out Easter began as a pagan festival celebrating spring in the Northern Hemisphere long before the advent of Christianity. And then it says here about these pagan customs. It says, many pagan customs associated with the celebration of spring eventually became absorbed within Christianity as symbols of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So they took pagan symbols and associated it with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Notice, the egg is a symbol of new life, and it became a common people's explanation of the resurrection. So they didn't find the explanation of the resurrection from the Bible. They got it from paganism and not from Christianity. So the egg was a symbol of new life in paganism, and then they attached it to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from death to life. So... They adopted this pagan symbol into the Christian church. And then it says decorating eggs is still popular, is still a popular folk custom in Eastern Europe. It says during the Middle Ages, people began to decorate uh, eggs and eat them as a treat following Mass on Easter Sunday after fasting through Lent. And then, then he says this actually still happens in some Eastern European countries. So the Easter egg comes from paganism as well and of course Christianity adopted a lot of these pagan symbols. Now does God allow us to adopt paganism into his religion? Well notice what Deuteronomy the 12th chapter says in verse 29 God says when the eternal your God shall cut off the nations from before you whether you go to possess them and you succeed them and you dwell in their land here is Israel moving into the promised land and of course there was a lot of pagans there, and they had their festivals and their customs and their pagan gods. And God says this in verse 30, Take heed to yourself, mean, meaning be careful, that you be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before you, and you inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Did they use prayer wheels and jaw sticks and eggs? And rabbits, did they use these things? How did these nations serve? How did these nations serve their gods? Then God says, Even so I will do likewise. Now what's the context? Notice verse 31. You shall not so do unto the eternal your God. So God says, Don't take all these pagan heathen customs, then turn around and use them to worship me. God says, You shall not so do unto the eternal your God, for every abomination to the eternal which he hates, have they done to their gods, even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fires to their gods? Whatsoever thing I command you, observe to do it, you shall not add to it, nor shall you diminish from it. So God says to do it his way, not your way. And by the way, all, the, all this that I'm telling you doesn't make a bit of difference if there is no God. 
If there is no God, then you don't have anything to worry about. Religion is purely a devising of man. But what if there is a God, and there is, and you can prove it, and if he thunders out, learn not the way of the heathen, the customs of the people are vain, well then, it matters a great deal, because God's going to call everybody into an accounting. And we have to give an account to God on what we've done in this life. So it matters a great deal, because there is a God, and he says, learn not the way of the heathen. Get this free booklet, Is Easter Christian and Jesus' uh, Resurrection on the Seventh Day Sabbath? Free of charge, off our website, British Israel. Ca. This is Peter Salemi saying goodbye, friends, and I'll see you here next time on the Watchman Program.